Hello everyone, it's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on The Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ Stocks, crypto assets, and interviews. Today's Thursday, July 27th, hope you're well. And in this video, we're going to be dedicating this one to Oxley and Imperial Brands. There was some news that Imperial Brands will be extending their debenture, valued at 123 million. We're gonna discuss that and we'll look at the chart as well. So we'll discuss all that and more. Before we get to it though, make sure to smash the like, help support me in the channel, all that good stuff. If you subscribe, tick the bell, you'll be notified on any future live streams or when I post a new video. Almost at 525,000 views. Wasn't that long ago that uh, I just eclipsed the half million view mark. And here we are, another basically another 25,000 views in no time. So it's crazy how how uh, time flies and uh, how the views fly once you start really getting the, uh, the snowball rolling. And it really is like a snowball. At the beginning, it just started off uh, 100 views was, was difficult. So uh, really going to extend out my uh, gratitude to the community as always. And I've just had so much overwhelming support. Over the last couple of months, it's really starting to take off, and I'm really, really grateful and appreciative, and I love each and every one of you who supported me along the way. So here's the article, Imperial Brands PLC extends 123 million convertible debenture and Oxley implements board and management changes. Full disclosure, I do own Oxley. I'm an investor. It's one of my smaller positions. It only accounts for less than 5% of my whole MJ portfolio. I do think there's a lot of risk with this company, but uh, I'm from Prince Edward Island. They actually had a subsidiary in Prince Edward Island, Dozcan, and we actually did some work for them. Uh, but I'm very bullish on the company. I like their products. I think they are very good in the 2.0 segment as well with the edibles and things like that. Uh, so I do think that it's a high risk, but very high reward. So I'm not investing any more than I'm willing to lose in this company. And you know, the money that I invest in Oxley, I'm just, you know, I'm setting and forgetting. It's money that I'm willing to lose. I'm not investing any more than I'm willing to lose and I'm not going to sell it. It's just gonna be money that I'm gonna let sit there until it's financially enticed to do so. If it goes to zero, so be it. But you know, I'm not a degen. Uh, I did my research and I'm diversified in the sector. I own multiple MJ stocks in the US, Canada. I've got producers, retailers, ETFs, right? And again, if we can find one, two, three unicorns that are gonna be companies that are gonna be here in three, five, 10 plus years from now, that could be generational wealth. And this isn't financial advice. This is for entertainment purposes only. I'll never tell you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor, so I'll never tell you to buy, sell, or hold, but I can just tell you what I'm doing and go from there. But here's the news. So Oxley, a leading consumer packaged good company and MJ products market is pleased to announce an agreement with the strategic partner Imperial Brands PLC to amend certain provisions to its previously issued 123 million debenture dated September 25th, 2019 as amended to July 6, 2021. Pursuant to the amendment, Imperial Brands and Oxy have agreed to extend the maturity date of the debenture by 24 months from September 25th, 2024 to September 25th, 2026. The parties anticipate the amendment to come into effect on August 16th, 2023, so next month. The debentures are convertible into common shares at a price of 81 cents per share, which is a long ways away from where we currently are at at the moment. At any time prior to the close of business on the business day immediately preceding maturity, Oxley remains Imperial Brands exclusive global partner for any future development, manufacturer, commercialization, sale, and distribution of MJ products. In connection with the initial investments by Imperial Brands, the parties agreed into an investor rights agreement which provides, among other things, that for so long as Imperial Brands holds a partially diluted percentage of outstanding common shares in the capital of Oxley of not less than 15%, it is eligible to nominate one individual designated by Imperial Brands uh, for election as a director to Oxley's board. As Imperial Brands no longer holds the required percentage under the Investor Rights Agreement, its nominee, Murray McGowan, has resigned from Oxley's board effective immediately. On behalf of myself and the rest of the board of directors, I would like to thank Mr. McGowan for his valuable guidance and support over the past two years, said Hugo Alves. Alves, I think it's pronounced, CEO of Oxley. The extension of the dementia will further our goal of prudently managing and strengthening our balance sheet. And I would like to thank our partners at Imperial Brands for their ongoing commitment to our company. And I look forward to our continued relationship. So resignation of CFO and appointment of interim CFO, this is the management changes. Oxley announces the resignation of Mr. Brian Schmidt from his position of Chief Financial Officer of Oxley, effective July 26, 2023. Mr. Schmidt is leaving for an opportunity outside of the MJ industry at a non-reporting issuer. Travis Wong, Oxley's Senior Vice President of Finance, has been appointed as Interim CFO of Oxley, effective immediately. Mr. Wong joined Oxley in 2017 and currently holds a position of Senior Vice President of Finance. So 15 years in corporate finance, accounting, and capital markets experience. Prior to joining Oxley, he worked at Natural Resources Investment Banker, Nomura Securities, based in London, England. He has advised on over $5 billion of public and private M&A, mergers, acquisition, 
transactions and has been involved in a capital raising transactions and broad range of European corporations. Early in his career, actually, I'm not going to go through that. You can read this on your own time, uh, but essentially, uh, they thank them for their contributions and there were some updates on their warrants. But in effort of time, I'm going to move on. There's some few other things that I want to uh, to go over, but I do think Oxley could very well be a buyout target. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you agree with me. Do you disagree with me? I always encourage thoughtful discourse, but market cap of Oxley right now sitting at just a hair over 15 million and that's Canadian as well. So it wouldn't, wouldn't take much for a company to come in and swoop them up, uh, but I do think that they'd be a great asset and buyout target uh, you never even know, maybe someone like Tilray. Tilray has been looking to uh, add to their portfolio as well. And they've just been on a mergers and acquisition frenzy. Realistically, they, they acquired Afria, then Hexo, and Hexo acquired Redican. So now uh, Tilray, the biggest LP in Canada. And I would argue the biggest company, going to be the biggest company in the MJ space. But we'll see what happens. But they, they could very well be looking at other things. They mentioned fruit and vegetables, so it could be BFF or something like that. But we'll see. Who do you think could potentially swoop in and buy Oxley if they did, um, if someone did decide to uh, to merge with them or to acquire them? I uh, always love hearing from you. But market capitalization of Imperial Brands, market cap is $21.63 billion. If we go back to 2016, it actually hit a high of $69 billion, just under $70 billion. So huge, and we know that Big Tobacco, right? Here's some of the brands of of Imperial brands. We know that Big Tobacco, Big Alcohol, getting into the space in a big way, Constellation Brands, you have Molson Coors, right? And uh, Philip Morris as well, which is the uh, the latest to get into the space with an Israeli. I did a video on that, a $650 million purchase of an Israeli company. So again, Big Tobacco, Big Alcohol have the most to lose, right? So it's no wonder they're getting into this and embracing the medicine of the future. And not only medicine, but from a recreational standpoint, it's it's healthier than alcohol and tobacco. So it's no wonder that they're threatened by it and they're you know jumping into the space, especially when things are down, right? This is the time where people swoop in and these big corporations swoop in and buy things for pennies on the dollar. But Oxley is based out of Toronto, Ontario, and they're governed and regulated by the Ontario Securities Commission. And you can see here reporting jurisdiction, pretty much all of Canada. We'll take a look at the chart here though. Uh, pretty much all MJ is down 80, 90% plus, and we're down basically 98% from the highs of February, 2021. You can see here, yep, down 98%. So just like most LPs in Canada, the average is 95% plus from February 2021 highs. And then from all time highs, it's anywhere from 98 to 99% plus. So in my opinion, this is very high risk, high reward. But off the low here, let's say you swoop this up at you know a penny or a penny and a half, you're looking at about a multiplier of effect of about 285X. So if you invested $1,000 there at the end, and this is why I'm kissing it goodbye, right? I don't care, I don't need this money. We're monthly oversold. If you know nothing about stocks and you just buy when we're overbought, uh, sorry, sell when we're overbought and buy when we're oversold. And then obviously do some research, some due diligence and pick companies that you think are going to be here for the long term or that are going to go, you know, insolvent or bankrupt, you should be fine, right? But let's just say this thing goes back to all-time highs. I don't think it will personally. I think it's more than likely going to be a bio target. Uh, but let's just say it did. That's about a 285X from here. So $1,000 investment into $285,000 just if we go back to all-time highs. And then we could even eclipse that and go into new price discovery. But again, I don't think that is the most likely scenario. But I'll definitely... You know, I, I have a couple thousand dollars invested into to Oxley. Um, well, I think it's just over a thousand, but I'm looking to get up to a, a couple thousand. And then, you know, I'll ride that to zero, right? And it's not about being a degenerate. It's just about placing, hedging your bets and trying to find one, two, three, four unicorns, right? And then finding the companies that are going to be here three, five, 10 plus years from now. And I think that Oxley definitely has, you know, the products, the brands and the partners to really make it happen. So on the weekly time frame, there's not much volume. But we are starting to see where the we're bullish on the MACD and the stochastic. And if we can just get a weekly candle close over two cents, a few candle closes over that, it's looking really good. And then we already got, um, we, we topped out here at the, what is it, 100 weekly moving average. And then we found resistance again at the 50. So if we can get a couple of candle closes again over those moving averages and start to see those curl with the shorter term below the longer term. And on the weekly time frame, if those start to cross, we could see, easily see a, some serious upside from here. And then on the daily time frame, we're not too far away from seeing a golden cross with the 50-day moving average below the 200-day moving average. And that is a very bullish indicator here on the daily time frame. 
Again, shorter term moving averages below the longer term and when it's on the daily chart and it's the 50 day and the 200 day specifically, that is a golden cross. Look what happened as we geared up for that golden cross. Price went from all the way down at about 12 cents up to about 50 cents. Then we had a death cross with the shorter term above the longer term. And then when that cross happened, price went from around 28 cents all the way down to one penny. So now we're way more beaten down this time around when we see this golden cross and it could realistically happen over the next several weeks or a couple of months. And I'm very bullish into the end of the fall here with HHS due for their verdict on their classification, whether we get rescheduling or descheduling, I think schedule three is the most likely and that would absolutely ignite the sector. But going down it there, let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this a company that you're bullish on for the long term? Are you adding? Are you selling? What are you doing? Uh, again, I can never tell you what to do because I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just giving my thoughts and opinions, but I'm very bullish on it for the long term. I think that they're a good buyout target as well. But going down to there, let me know your thoughts and opinions. We'll continue the conversation in the comments section below. Thanks again for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth. If you can smash the like, if you think I earned it today, I would appreciate it. It's Rod with Power Group and share the video. I would appreciate that as well. Have a great night. See you on the next video.